Hey, Robert. Hey, John. So uh, in the past few weeks, we've been talking about, we talked about AI, we talked about precautionary principle, we've talked about kind of large cultural, societal issues that relate to, uh, and how ingenuism relates to them and, and um, kind of uh, what it means to embrace ingenuism, what it means when you don't embrace ingenuism. We talked about the nuclear power industry, for example. Uh, so we want to, today we want to bring it down to a more personal level to uh, kind of the, the, the goals and choices an individual makes and, and kind of the values they pursue um, and how ingenuism uh, helps, uh, why it's important in the pursuit of, of personal values. So, you know, what is, what is ingenuism kind of at a more, uh, we've talked a little bit about this, I think a few months ago, but what is, what is it at the concrete level? What does ingenuity has, have to contribute to uh, one's pursuit of one's personal values? Well, when we're young, we're usually focused on moving forward on what you call progress. Uh, and you know, we define it in whatever way we define it, but it, it's a very much of a focus. And it's important to recognize that in the same way that the tenets of ingenuism really drive progress at a societal or an organizational level, it also is basically driving progress in your life. I mean, people can get lucky, you could win the lottery and, and get rich, but there's, if you want to have self-directed, reliable, predictable progress, you have to follow certain principles and at the highest level, they're the same. Uh, connection and the uh, ability to learn are what drive progress. And we, we sort of know that when we're young, you know, we're, we, we are focused on acquiring the skills and the knowledge that we need to, uh, that we at least perceive that we need to move forward in our career, uh, whoever, however we're doing our career, whoever we're working with or working for, they're interested in us um, making progress and improving. So there's a lot of, of force for that. Uh, and so it's easy to not have any distinction about it. You just, you know, you advance and then there's this idea that you sort of plateau out and, you know, that's basically giving up the core elements of ingenuism. I mean, people figure out what works and it works as well as it works. And then they just keep doing that. Uh, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, certainly in ingenuism, the idea is you learn from what you've done. You learn from other people through connection, uh, but you never stop trying to push things forward. The idea that there's some sort of ceiling for people is exactly the same as the idea there's some sort of ceiling for society. Um, it's only true when you say it's true because then you start you start ignoring the opportunities to actually move forward. Well, I think the, the two things here, one is, I mean, I think that, that that's true, but I think people, even when they're young, they, they, they tend to focus so much of that energy, that ingenuism energy on their career, which is great because career is probably one of the, if not the most important thing they could be doing when they're young. But ingenuism really works beyond that. It's it's about living your life and, and, and how you live your life and that this pursuit and this pushing and this challenging connection, experimentation, uh, uh, the willingness to embrace failure, all of that relates to uh, your your love life. It relates to uh, how you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, whether you're afraid of risks. And, and it, a lot of times, unfortunately, a focus is so much on career that I think these other areas get neglected and we kind of just go with the flow on everything else. Uh, I think that's right. Although when you're young, you tend to be meeting new people, making new friends, there's a, a churn and a dynamic that helps pull for the basic ideas of ingenuism, of in, in enhancing your connection with the world, of trying new things, of learning you know, from trying new things and from other people. Uh, and that tends to fade away. But certainly, I, I did not mean to imply that ingenuism and ingenuity isn't the driver of progress when we're young. Uh, just observing that for most people, it's natural to at least apply some of those tenets, and then that tends, tends to fade. But in both cases, we can get a lot of benefit from applying distinction and getting really clear on what is it that we're trying to accomplish, what are the core principles that are going to be required for that, and then what are the, the actions that we're going to take. This isn't a hypothetical conversation. This is a, a straight-up applied conversation for living your life. 
So what are some of the guidance you would provide somebody? Um, and, and let's assume they're not young anymore. I don't know what age that counts as not young anymore, but at some point you're not young anymore. Uh, and uh, and where maybe, you know, kind of that inertia, you're stuck. You, you, you've, you've achieved something in your career. You've achieved a certain lifestyle. But how, how, do you, how do you sustain that? How do you maintain that? How do you push that forward? Yes, you're on someday you will no longer be young at some point. I'm, I'm still waiting for that day. I don't, yes, I, I, it'll I, happen, I don't but probably not for a while. <laughs> uh, so th there's, if we use the framework, which is, of course, what we want to do, because it's something you can always go back to, is this, you first want to be looking at, you know, how am I connected to what's important to me and what I need to know as far as what's important to me and how am I expanding that connection? And, you know, this is not as simple as, oh, I'm going to get on LinkedIn and, and, you know, connect with a bunch of people. This is about really getting a access to the lessons that other, the knowledge other people have created and the lessons that they learned. And so, for example, if you're in a career and you're, you've had some success and you are you know, interested in doing something different, but you don't want to risk your success, it's a big deal to quit your job and go off and say, I'm going to do something else. Uh, but it wouldn't be nearly as big a deal to say, I'm going to keep my job, but I'm going to go find five or 10 people who have left the kind of career I'm in and started the kind of career I'm considering and ask them, are they, you know, what did they do? Are they glad that they did it? What were the mistakes they made? What are the things that they were most important to their success? You know, and, and you can't define the questions in advance. I just made up four off the top of my head that probably apply in most situations. But really, part of this act, act, uh, activity would be to learn the questions that you need to ask as you consider actually making what seems like a huge jump. And then, of course, to empower that, whether you know if you decide to, to go for it, or even if you decide not to go for it, to have made that based on the information that's available to you. Yeah, so so go out and, and seek new information, see people who might uh, who might be interested in this. Keep learning. I mean, I think I think people give up on on teaching themselves new skills and new abilities. If you want to switch over careers, this I mean, the opportunity today to use YouTube and and to use all the tools that are online to just learn something new about how to do something or or a new career path or what it looks like are just uh, astounding. And uh, uh, cat videos get more views, uh, and I'm not you know, and and that's fine. Uh, but if you really want to make your life exciting and and um, and pursue kind of constantly grow and constantly push forward, uh, learning and educating yourself and learning from others and engaging with new material, not just with new people, but new material is so crucial. And it's never been easier in all of human history to do it. That, that it's it truly is. That, that's 100 percent true. And you made a really important distinction because. When we talk about connection, we talk about getting access to the knowledge and lessons that are out there, but you don't have them yet, but you know that you don't have them. So you could, you could call it what you know you don't know, and you go out and you learn that. So you, you're considering this other career path. But what if you're in your career, you're pretty satisfied, but you're not wowed, and you don't really see any alternatives? Well, then we're in the realm of what you don't know, but you don't know what it is. You just know that there's a lot of stuff you don't know, but you don't have the right questions. You don't have the right people to say, oh, I'm going to find five people like this. Uh, and then that's where it's really important to be asking yourself, what am I doing in my life to deal with this mass of what I don't know, I don't know. Uh, and one of the things you can do is say, okay, well, I'm going to start doing different things. I'm going to learn a new skill on a monthly, a quarterly basis. It doesn't have to be on a regular basis, but I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be learn a new topic. And I'm going to you know, go into it, whether it's taking a course or self-directed. I'm going to meet new types of people. I'm going to read new kinds of books. I'm going to watch new kinds of movies. I'm going to go different places. Uh, and that is something that is uncomfortable for most people. For some people, that sort of exploration is very natural. Uh, but for most people, it's something that particularly as, as they get settled in their lives, 
it's not natural, but it's incredibly important because the, what's out there that you don't even know is out there is where the real gold is. So, so beyond Korea, how do we apply this to, to the rest of one's life? Well, it, it, we certainly, we, we talked about this a few years ago, but it certainly applies to, to dating um, and to building friendships. Uh, and those are things that, you know, it makes a little more sense that we get settled and, and then we're, I, I won't say we're done with it because we can make new friends, we can, but we have our core group of friends and it's not necessarily going to expand. I mean, it sort of mechanically can't expand over the course of our lifetime if we're going to stay close to these people. Uh, but then there are other areas that are sort of settled early and then become unsettled late. And the one that I think is the most important for people is to look at their health and their fitness and their well-being is what works, you know, when you're 21 stops working when you're 27. And then what works when you're 27 stops working when you're 35. And then, and it's a steady progression. And it's very easy to ignore that fact, keep doing what you're doing, and then just get on to a steady decline. And then that creates all sorts of bad self-reinforcements. So one thing that uh, I think ingenuism definitely applies to as people get older is their health, not just exercise, but also what do I need to be doing to take care of myself, not just for tomorrow, but for next year, for the next decade, you know, for 50 years from now. <clears throat> and some of that is, uh, a lot of that is going to be inside the realm of connection, learning what is already known. But we have to recognize that people, although we're very, very similar, are also each individuals and are different. And what works for you might not work for me. What's important for you to do might not be important for me. Some of that is uh, information you can gather by, by doing tests, but some of it is you have to sort of test, experiment on yourself. Uh, how do you sleep better? How do you um, have more energy? How do you have more focus you know, at, at work or with your kids or whatever it is that's important to you? Uh, those are really important questions. And you know, it's, there are so many things that, to distract us these days. And, and they easily fit into buckets of, oh, well, I'm learning because I'm reading my, my Facebook feed. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about not, I'm going to call it trivia, and I don't want to be unfair because there's, I'm sure there's stuff on people's Facebook feeds that are important and <laughs> useful. Uh, but when we talk about learning, we're talking about a valuable insight, something that, that alters your life. Uh, and you're not going to get that very often off your Facebook feed. So you have to figure out what am I going to do uh, that I do get these and what are the things that are in the way? And I would assert for a lot of people, it's their Facebook feed. Yeah, I mean, I agree completely about the health side of it, although I'm, you know, given that I'm perpetually young, it doesn't affect me. But um, I'm going to push back on friendship and, and uh, marriage because... I think too many people get settled on those issues as well, right? I mean, you might have the core friends that you had in high school, but now you're 40 or 50 or 60 and they're not, they're not doing it for you anymore, right? It's just not the same thing. You've, you've, you've grown apart. That could happen in marriage as well. And I think a lot of people are too afraid, too lazy, to whatever, to make a change. And I think sometimes you have to with friends, and 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 and, uh, and and with loved ones, you know, you you can't just accept the status quo. Life is dynamic; it's moving on. Every second you have, you're never going to have again. You know, you gotta you gotta do the same thing, and ex sometimes accept failure and and move on. Well, that's a really good point because even if it doesn't involve moving on, there's still the value of exploring new things. Yep. Uh, because you know, you you may be limited to uh, you know one husband but that doesn't mean that you can't you're limited to a particular type of relationship with your husband uh, and experimentation and figuring out what the, the two of you really enjoy and what really brings you close and that that's something that is is requires experimentation and learning and being willing to to deal with failure so bringing up failure is a, a great segue because the, the biggest barrier I assert to people applying the principles of ingenuism uh, isn't laziness, although there's some to that. It isn't 
distraction. It isn't their Facebook feed, although I think there is some of that. Uh, it is the relationship that they have with failure, that trying new things uh, is dangerous and painful, and it's you know dangerous because it's painful. Uh, we're not talking about swimming with great white sharks. We're talking about doing things that uh, may not go the way that we want them to. Uh, and that can be a very big deal if you're quitting your job and, and just going off and opening a, an ice cream shop. Uh, and, and it may be something that you want to do. But most attempts, uh, the, the downside of failure, most things that we try, the downside of failure is much smaller than that. And we treat it like it is a much bigger deal than it really is. And that is, it, it's so corrosive because it not only keeps you from trying things, but it keeps you from learning because learning requires acknowledging failure. So if you try something and it doesn't go the way you want it, then you, you have two choices. You can either uh, quit and acknowledge the failure and examine the failure and then try again if it makes sense to try again. Or you can keep going and be perseverant in all the things that society tells you should be, you know, quitters never win and winners never quit and nobody likes a quitter and yeah, yeah. Uh, or you can qu quit, but then never talk about it again, never think about it again, but ne except, you know, in your head, just, you know, beat yourself up about it versus, um, you know, the ingenuism way is really acknowledging that the failure happened, that it wasn't you that failed, that there, there was a, an outcome that wasn't what you were looking for, and then really start digging into why that happened and what you can learn from it, and then treat that lesson like it's gold, that the trial was worth it, even though things didn't go the way you want, that the lesson was worth it. And the example we always go back to is, you know, the star the <clears throat> the you know Elon Musk shooting rockets up the, and the, yep, the yep. starship blowing up and it's just that it's not what everyone wants but it is what is necessary to learn the lessons and the lessons are so valuable that it's not actually a failure in the sense of oh gosh I didn't I wish I didn't do that it's a failure in a step on the way to accomplishing what we want to accomplish. So, you know, it's not just SpaceX, you know, SpaceX is a great example, but we could point to a thousand different companies where the willingness to experiment, fail and learn, uh, but, you know, big companies like Amazon down to, you know, mom and pop shops is what separates the successful companies from the unsuccessful companies. And it's also what separates the successful lives from the unsuccessful lives. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. So. Never give up uh, uh, trying new things and experimenting, and uh, I mean within balance, of course. But uh, uh, and uh, and and pushing the envelope. And you know, there's only there's only one life. It's it's kind of a waste to put it on just on neutral and kind of cruise to the to the end line. Uh, there's too many fun, exciting things to to be done in the meantime. It's that's definitely true, and it's what separates us. It's what makes human beings human beings. Yeah. Is you know we're we're not, in the end, we're not satisfied just coasting and reproducing. And basically every other species, as far as we can tell, is satisfied with that. Uh, and so when you when you give that up, you're you're really turning away from the core element of what makes human beings people. All right. I think that is a good point to close it for today. Uh, we yeah, you wanted to say something? I wanted to, to say um, that, you know, in a, a future, because we we each are committed to ingenuous and principles, and we're also grappling with the same issues that everybody is. Yeah. We don't have a fantastically productive relationship to failure. Uh, we ha don't have a perfect um, set of principle not, of, of uh, what's the right word? activities that we're doing to make sure that we're getting all of this. Uh, and so I'd like to talk at, at some point, not too distant future about, you know, what we're doing and what we're going to do to really get the benefits of being human. That'd be fantastic. So uh, let's do that. Well, not next week, but the week after that. All right. Sounds good. You're on. Just down to concrete. All right. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Robert. Bye. Bye.